Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is my last day here in Maui. The tech summit ended a couple of days ago and on that last day we had the opportunity to benchmark the brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. So today I want to talk to you guys about the numbers that I was able to get from that. Also some gaming experiences since of course I installed PUBG and Genshin Impact and of course we're going to talk about some of the new improvements that we have in here in the performance of what the 8 Gen 2 can do when um, it's on a reference device essentially untethered by any kind of UI element or optimization by any OE. This is essentially the best that we can get on a reference device from Qualcomm for the 8 Gen 2. This is TK, let's check it out. I want to start off by talking about benchmarks and gaming experiences in general. Uh, just overall, understand this is a snapshot in time. Also, this is a reference device that is not running a custom skin from any OEM, meaning no, no uh, basically one UI, no fun touch, any of those optimizations that we typically see from OEMs like Samsung, Vivo, Oppo, all the other companies. They typically come on a device when they have this processor. So what we're looking at essentially is a reference device, a device that Qualcomm put together specifically for us to test during this event and will never be released. But this should give us a good reference point of what this processor can do. The other thing I also want to mention is that Qualcomm did set all of these benchmarks to run on the Prime Core. That's the X3 core that's running in here, the most powerful of all the cores that we have in here. So the performance that we're looking at here, again, is more of the optimal situation. But I also want to talk to you guys about, of course, performance, um, you know, hiccups down the road, but also things that potentially could be concerning as far as thermals, because that was something that we looked at last year when we saw the 8 Gen 1 and even the year before with the 888. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about as far as numbers and what we did. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Qualcomm did share with us a list of the, some of their benchmarks or a range of some of the benchmarks that they ran on their devices. Understandably, that should be the devices that they gave us to actually reference. So from that point of view, those are the numbers that we're going to be talking about as far as performance. The other thing I also wanted to make sure is obviously how does this run games? I did get a chance to do some ray tracing demos and of course I showed that to you guys in the other video with the top three features of the HN2 that I pushed out I think yesterday. But the overall performance here, obviously I had to install PUBG Mobile again, I played a game. I also installed uh, Genshin Impact because I want to see how does Genshin handle as far as thermals and performance on a device like this. The first thing I'll say overall, performance on this, obviously to be expected, this is the best of the best. The, you know, the 8 Gen 1, the 888 were also very powerful processors and there's no, um, I would probably say there's no surprise that this is performing the same level and even better. We do have a better performance per watt usage, meaning we have a 25% performance increase on the GPU with about 45 watt percent, well 45% decrease in perform, well power draw which means less thermal issues. And that was actually true. After an hour and a half of benchmarking on multiple devices, the devices never got hot enough to the point that I've seen with the 8 Gen 1 or even the 888. And I've tested those and we've tested them, my buddy and I, Juan Carlos, and we've seen what the temperatures can get. Moving over to TSMC from Samsung has definitely been showing improvements. And this is technically a second generation TSMC uh, process as, uh, as far as a processor. The reason we say that is obviously the 8 Plus Gen 1 was the first iteration, this is the second, and from that obviously we're going to see some optimizations. Although the numbers that I referenced to you guys with the 45% power draw the, uh, the decrease, it's really the referencing the 8 Gen 1 from last year because this is again the 8 Gen 2, not the 8 Plus Gen 2. When it comes up to benchmarking, Geekbench is by far one of my favorite benchmarking because it's something that we can all run on all of our devices and we have an instantaneous result. It doesn't take 30 minutes, it doesn't take an hour, it's literally something that you can run within a minute on your device and get a snapshot of of what it references. Now as far as the devices that we're running on the Geekbench test here, I'm running the X70 Pro Plus, I'm also running, uh, that's running the 888, I'm running the uh, obviously the Z Fold 4 that's running the 8 Plus Gen 1 and of course we have the 8, uh, well the 8 Gen 2. The numbers are not very surprising, obviously the 8 Gen 2, the reference device is going to give us the best at 1493, that's going to be on the single core test, and 1156 on the Fold 4. I will say though, Samsung does somewhat throttle the experience when it comes down to their processors now. Although I'm running an 8 Plus Gen 1, which should give me numbers closer to 1371, like I saw on the uh, ROG Phone 6D running the 9000 Plus, the Dimensity, about a week ago. But the numbers, obviously, you'll see are a little bit more throttle. So again, performance is there, but just, again, the numbers on the Geekbench are not showing up. And then when it came to the X70 Pro Plus, we got an 1126. So overall, single core, you can definitely see the improvement. 
usability and daily activity, I don't think we're gonna notice any of these. This is pretty much gonna show when we're, let's say, um, either uh, producing content, watching, uh, you know, not watching content even, uh, producing content or gaming at a very high level, maybe even pushing the level with ray tracing as we see with the 8 Gen 2. On the multi-core, we got 5,099 when it came down to, uh, you know, basically the 8 Gen 2. And of course, 3,443 3, for the Z Fold 4 and 3,256 when it came down to the X70 Pro Plus. Obviously, generational improvement and upgrade. And just for reference, though, when it came down to the, uh, what we got last week with the Dimensity 9000, well, the 9000 Plus, that actually got about 8,648 on the multi-core. So depending on what ASUS is doing on their device, there also could be playing a factor there. Um, I, as you can imagine, um, all of the functionalities and everything that within PUBG and Genshin Impact can be running and they ran very nicely and no overheating uh, or noticeable overheating after, again, benchmarking for about an hour and a half and then getting these games installed. I did notice some heating up when we were using the modem to download and install information, but that's typical. If you've ever set up your device at, out of the box, you'll notice that there's going to be some heat up a little bit. Uh, over on the top, closer to the camera module, where typically the modem is sitting in there. But then afterwards, it ran pretty nicely. And again, with the most, uh, well, for, for the most part, as far as Geekbench and numbers, and, and let's just go ahead and talk about what you should expect from when you're looking at a, a Gen 2 or what at least should be getting in the next year. Uh, we're looking at potentially basically about somewhere between 1485 to 1495 when it comes down to uh, the uh, Geekbench ST. Geekbench MT is going to be somewhere between 50, uh, 5050, so 5050 and 5200 when it comes down to the score there. N22 was supposed to be somewhere between 1.7 million to 1.28 million. And I realized that it was running, and depending on how many runs you do, you may get that number. And overall, it's still pretty high. Uh, the other two that I felt like maybe would be good numbers is a 3D Mark Wildlife Ultimate, or sorry, Unlimited, and that came up at 82, and a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme Unlimited, and that gave us at 23. And that's going to be basically what you should expect as far as performance there. The last thing, I'm pretty sure you guys want to know about N22, uh, and of course that came in at about 3.5 million. That was actually giving us some pretty decent numbers there. And when it came down to the uh, basically uh, AI benchmark, that's going to be about 20 to 21k. Overall, again, this, these are numbers, these are just reference numbers on a device that was running in, an op, in a very optimal position, also running on the Prime Core. So again, the most powerful and most efficient, well, the most powerful processor of the bunch. Uh, remember, we have a single Prime Core, four uh, medium cores, and then three efficiency cores. So the architecture is slightly different, but again, the GPUs, the Adreno GPU from Qualcomm providing us some of the heavy lifting as well. So. Hope you found this informative. Uh, again, as we start seeing devices being released from companies to actually show us what these devices will really be able to do, that's gonna be definitely what we're looking for. How ray tracing is implemented, how much, you know, what's the frame rate on ray tracing and running there. Oppo did, uh, did provide us a, uh, a statement during the summit saying that they're guaranteeing over 30 minutes of gameplay at 720p with 60 frames per second consistent, uh, 60 frames per second experience. And that's kind of along the line of what we've seen from Oppo and other companies like OnePlus when it comes down to gaming. It, they typically shoot for that really good, consistent 60 frames per second experience so that they don't really compromise either battery life or user experience on their devices. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of this? And is this something that interests you as far as the performance? And are you looking forward to seeing what the S23 Ultra, uh, seeing that we're gonna be getting that new 200 megapixel sensor from Samsung on that. And of course the 8 Gen 2, as you can imagine, with all of the performance. I, I can imagine if anything, Samsung will be basically trying to put everything that Qualcomm releases in a package. And of course, giving it to us on the Ultra side. So thank you very much for the support. I'll see you in the next one.